driving, especially in some cities, is particularly infuriating. Like uh, Washington, D.C., that's real bad. Los Angeles is fairly bad. Atlanta's terrible. I'm coming up on this exit that I take every day that's always backed up. And there are always people who want to cheat the system. You'll see. These people just drive up to the front of the line and barge in front of everybody. Now, for somebody like me who's a former aggressive driver, that's a dangerous thing to do. You never know when I'm going to relapse. I'm not. But it is the kind of thing that would have made me chase you down and run you off the road in a best-case scenario 20 years ago. Yeah, I've done worse. But, you know, these entitled or selfish or self-centered people, however you want to say it, they don't care about me, they don't care about you, they don't care about the danger they're putting other people in on the highway, they don't care about your rules. Rules are for other people. Obviously, it boils down to bad parenting. I mean, they never learned how to take turns on the sliding board in the playground when they were three years old, and they haven't progressed mentally since then. Anyway, the, the point is, those people are creating more people who will act like them. I know, I used to be that guy. I used to be the guy who would say, nobody's gonna make a chump out of me. If he goes to the front of the line, then I go in front of him. It's contagious. And before you know it, you have this whole virus of anger moving its way from car to car, highway to highway, street to street, through the entire population until you have a, a whole city of people who have to be the first car in line. It's exactly like cancer. It's these anger cells dividing and multiplying. And Don't think this only affects driving. When you get home from an hour of being cut off, flipped off, pissed off, you can't just turn it off. You're going to carry that with you, and it's going to be reflected in your attitude. The, I think that the two good things to know about this is, number one, you can change. I'm living proof of that. Uh, I'm proof you can learn how to ignore all the selfish, dangerous acts going on around you and be in your own uh, car zen bubble. And number two, the opposite of all that is true as well. Uh, every study on it proves it. Positive actions are contagious as well. Positivity multiplies. Kindness duplicates exponentially. Anyway, here's the thought I was having. And this applies to big, major life event kind of things, as well as every moment of the day kinds of things. Here it is. I believe that all of us, everywhere we go in a day, everywhere we go in life, we take something and we leave something. If you think about it, everywhere you go through life or through your day, you're constantly taking and giving, whether you want to or, or whether you intend to or not. Like uh, when you walk on the beach, you're going to leave that beach with sand on your feet and you're going to leave behind footprints, you know? These are things that you take and leave. They can be positive things. Or negative things. It can be a mix of the two. And unfortunately, it seems like there are lots of people who think that life works in the same way a conventional game does. They think the goal is, the way they win is, they have to have it better than you have it. They think the goal is to have more than you have, to have better than you have. So they take as much as they possibly can carry and spread as much negative stuff as possible. That way, they have more and better. They're winning. I think that's why we see so many people intentionally inflicting harm and discomfort and hurt 
even physical and psychological wounds on anybody they encounter. They think everybody is an opponent. And if they drag down their opponents, they have a better chance of winning. That's why you see, um, for example, a pickup with tractor tires on it, rolling coal on some lady just you know driving her kids home from school in a Prius. That Prius didn't do anything to that truck. That lady didn't do anything to that guy. She just bought a, an electric car because she thought that's what's right for her. So what is the best case outcome for the guy in the truck rolling coal? Uh, if he and his buddies harass enough people, car companies will stop manufacturing electric vehicles? And then he wins? How exactly does he win? How, what positive thing does he get out of that? What, he'll, he'll finally be able to own a vehicle that runs on gasoline? Uh, he's doing that now. So, aside from being a jackass, what are you really trying to accomplish? I don't understand that phenomenon. I just don't. And I don't drive an electric car. I just don't get it. Well, the surface answer as to what they get out of it is obviously to cause someone else to be, you know, inconvenienced or, or made to feel uncomfortable or to get one over on them. To, it, just to hurt a stranger in some way. I'm not on Twitter but somebody sent me a link to a Twitter post the other day, and it only took me about 30 seconds of being on Twitter to see how that platform has become such a cesspool of hatred. Twitter seems to only be vile, mean-spirited, and, and hateful, angry people trying to hurt each other with words. I mean, there's no way Twitter is good for anybody's mental health. No way. There's certainly no educational value there. You are not going to learn anything on Twitter. There's no actual information. And yeah, I'll, I'll further my elderly out-of-touch image here um, that I've developed from this monologue by asking a cliche question. A cliche but sincere question. What happened to the country where I used to live where people had their differences for sure? but you still possessed some sort of humanity. You know, you, you didn't want to deliberately hurt other people. At least we knew back then that we could not be successful if we spent our time tearing each other down. We have to help each other if we want any kind of success. I mean, remember going all the way back to Julius Caesar, the military strategy, divide and conquer? Well, I guess the conquering must be happening now because clearly the dividing us has already happened. And the sad part is what the bad actors will eventually learn is that grabbing and hoarding while trying to hurt everybody else is just not how anybody has ever achieved happiness, ever, ever. Life does not work that way. Your, your happiness has no link whatsoever to anybody else's happiness or sadness or anything. It, it never has. And anyway, happiness can't be measured from one person to the next. So how are you going to know when you have more happiness than the other person's happiness? You're not. Happiness is definitely not based on money or fame or stuff or travel or how busy you are or how much you like your job or any of that. And I can prove that. This is a fact. And by the way, I'm thinking of very specific people when I say this. I know people who are famous, who have the best houses and cars and food and millions of dollars in the bank, the, the, the craziest and most awesome jobs you could ever imagine. Fame, travel, people who seemingly have everything that are insanely miserable and I know people who are worried about how they're going to pay their next bill, how they're going to pay any bills this month, who have worked their entire lives and still work long, hard hours every day in a job they don't like, a job that gives them absolutely nothing to show for it at the end of the day, who are the happiest people I know. So it's not stuff. Man, I don't know what the answers are. I don't know how we get back to a place where we, um, you know, 
care about our neighbors. Not even necessarily where we're kind to each other, but where we're not actively trying to hurt each other. But I believe that, you know, and again, to be cliche, it starts with me. You know, it starts with you. It starts with individuals deciding on a daily basis and in life in general that, you know, everywhere I go, I'm going to take with me something good and positive and I'm going to leave the same for the next guy in my wake. I'm definitely not the sharpest baseball in the drawer of baseballs, but <laughs> I think this stuff is... I, I think even a caveman such as myself can look and easily discern that all that adds up. But anyway, these are just the random thoughts I have while I drive. Hope you have a good day. I have no idea what all I just said, but I'm going to post it anyway. <laughs>